to what degree can I explain this on air without getting my ass in fucking weird attention? Okay. All right, you know what? Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. All right. Um, okay. Okay, kids. Apparently, we need to do this. Your own server is the best option, Square. Your your own server is the best option, but it also opens you up to some other stuff. Most people can't run an email server. Um, if you... Here is, here is, here is the... Okay, so... I need somebody who is kind of boomer to join me on air. Who's comfortable being kind of boomer? I need somebody who is going to ask dumb questions. Um, that way, because I can get technical. I can I can gla I can just like glaze over things that is obvious to me. And so I need somebody who's comfortable being my my boomer for for this segment. Um, who's who's gonna volunteer? Um, don't make me choose you. Um, <clears throat> where they're asking <laughs> computer, um, <laughs> where they're, um, yeah, Caboose, you are. You, you, Caboose doesn't fit the fit the bill for this. Um, Caboose would not ask the right questions. Um, so we're gonna do operational security for the activist. That's what we're gonna do. Um, I oh, you know what? I know who needs to. Um. You still there, Scott? Scott's boomer is shit when it comes to tech. Yeah. He's boomer as shit. Good boy. What's up, you boomer fuck? Dude, god damn it. I was so hoping you wouldn't call me out. Yeah. I, I knew it. I thought I thought that other night when we were when I was talking about the exploit, I was like, wait a second, he fucking glazed over entirely. <laughs> like, I don't know anything about tech, all right? Okay, so ask the obvious questions as I go along. All the right. the stuff it's, that pops you might in be your too mind. many questions. It's okay. It's okay. Um so let's start with the obvious question that was asked. Uh, yeah, yeah, Scott's terrible at tech. Um, oh God, yeah, I'm so bad at tech. So here's the here's the here's the thing. First off, somebody asked, uh, somebody stated, Square stated, it's running your own server. If you have to ask me how to get a secure email address, you are in no position to be setting up a secure email server. Okay, yeah, not at all. Yeah. So that is that's just ruled out of the gate. You are going to be reliant upon somebody else's service. That's just the way it's going to go. Um, so let me let me get a couple of things lined up here, and I am going to walk you through um, two levels of sort of potential here. Um, I'll get a couple of fucking things lined up. All right. Cool. Now, <laughs> time to go back to Courier Pigeon. Uh, hey, sadly, um, let's see. What is your, I mean, that's your first message. Um, oh, wow, but you've been following for a while. Welcome back. Um, okay, so first out of the gate. Um, I'm going to be partially reading from something I already have written that you guys can access. Um, it is on my, um, it got, it needs fucking like grammar and spell checked, but it is like early alpha. Uh, it's on my cheat sheet on my website. Um, so if you want to follow along for some of that, um, cs.kaisthings.com, cs.kaisthings.com. It'll be at the bottom under the technology section. It's a tab called operational security for the activist. Um, 
This is the basics. Um, I'm going to add on to that a little bit as we go along. Um, but I will also be reading it. So if you aren't already aware, you should be, but if you aren't already aware, your communications are subject to global surveillance. Straight up. Your, your communications are basically permeable. Um, there are a few instances in which there is what we call end-to-end -end encryption, meaning the device between, say, Scott and myself both use a shared key system to encrypt the communications from my side to him. He decrypts. He sends to me. He, he types a message. It encrypts. It sends to me. I decrypt, right? There, there are end-to-end -end encryption systems. There are problems with them. We're not going to get into um, to, uh, cryptography and some of the mathematical foibles that uh, are, are involved in algorithmic encryption. But um, what you need to know is that there are a dozen, dozen middlemen. I understood the word foibles. Yes. Um, does, there are a dozen, <laughs> dozen middlemen sitting between you and anybody you're talking to. And all of them have the potential to one look at your your uh, your tech uh, look at your messages for themselves, or be compelled by a government entity to do it on their behalf, or in some instances, such as Room Four uh, Six Forty One A in the AT and T San Francisco hub. Um, the NSA has a direct fiber split from the Trans-Pacific um, fiber run that goes up into the AT&T building. So they literally split the fiber and the NSA gets a direct copy of all the communications coming across it. So there's multiple layers or levels of surveillance that can be conducted on you at any given time. There also is targeted surveillance. Um, targeted surveillance, there are a couple of ways to mitigate. Um, I will mention one of them as this progresses. Um, but starting position, you need a good VPN. Baseline, you need a VPN. Okay, so what the fuck is a VPN, right? You've probably heard the term before. You're probably some IT geek, somebody like me. Uh, you've seen it advertised like on the back of like a Raid Shadow Legends fucking Nord VPN Linus ad or some shit like that, right? What the fuck is a VPN? Where can you get one? It stands for Virtual Private Network. It's basically a technology that extends a private network, say your home network across a public network, usually the internet, but it could be your university or your work network. And that enables users to send and receive data across shared or public networks as if their, uh, as if their uh, computing devices were directly connected to that private network. So it takes like your, your wife's computer and your computer talking to each other in the same house. Your wife's computer can go across the country and it is treated essentially the same as if you guys were still in the same house. So it, it eliminates a lot of that external interference by using multi -layer, multiple layers of encryption usually. It, it's, we're not gonna get into the technology of it, but tunneling and encryption is generally what you're gonna see talked about, okay? So you need a VPN. Um, applications will run across a VPN. These days, VPNs are very easy to configure. The, app, uh, the, the apps that um, the VPN providers use are fairly seamless. So there's not a whole lot of barrier to entry on this technology. Most people can, can run one. Encryption is common, but not an intrinsic or inherent part of a VPN. What is encryption? Encryption is just an, a method of obfuscating data. It's a way for you and I to have a shared common password basically, um, and not necessarily know each other's password. So no, I got no boomer questions here so far. We're good for right now. Cool. But trust, trust. It, it we'll will, get there. It will happen. Yes. Um, there are higher details in some of this that like if, if somebody had technical questions, we could get into pr uh, public and private key shared encryption and key rings and these sorts of things. But we don't need to do that for the purposes of a OPSEC for activists uh, discussion. Right. Um, Just saying that they're pretty easy. Like if you don't have a VPN, get one. It's not hard. So you literally just click a button and then it'll fucking do it for you. And if you want to choose a place like DC or something, well, uh, I will, I will get you some recommendations. Um, 
coming up here shortly. Um, it, VPNs uh, can make uh, it can't make online encrypt uh, it can't make online connections completely anonymous. You have to know that they can increase security and privacy, but they cannot necessarily make your connection completely anonymous. This is this is sort of the the hang up here, is where a lot of people can sort of get, we'll say backtraced, um, as a result of this. Um, it has to do with sort of coordinating at multiple levels, and these are the sorts of things that is very difficult to do. And if you have a good VPN provider, then it becomes nigh impossible. But not every B VPN provider, I would 98% of VPN providers are not that great of a VPN provider. So what a VPN security model actually provides is confidentiality. So even the network traffic, if it's being sniffed or looked at, that's how people in IT talk about these sorts of things, you, sn you sniff data. Um, if the network traffic is being sniffed at a low level, an attacker would only see that encrypted tunnel data. Right. This is this is what you're you're essentially doing. Um, so sender authentication is to prevent unauthorized users from accessing the VPN. So everybody in the VPN is supposed to be in the VPN as opposed to n not necessarily your Wi-Fi network or that Starbucks network. Right. Like anybody could just be there. A VPN is people who are supposed to be there and message integrity. Um, it. it Many VPN technologies ensure message integrity. That way messages can't be tampered with in transit. There are man-in-the-middle attacks that can alter data in transit. It's a very high-end attack mo uh, mode, but again, we're dealing with people who have global surveillance technologies. So they're capable. Um, this is what VPNs mitigate. So in summary, VPNs, allow you to easily encrypt the stuff going from your computer to the internet and back from prying eyes. That's that's what a VPN actually does. Um, I will, okay, so uh, let me, uh, I would not go with Proton VPN. We will get to my recommendation. Um, um, okay, I will address Outcast. I will address your first fucking paragraph in a second. Uh, I will address the second one in a second. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, just guys, guys, stop getting ahead of yourselves. <laughs> just go along for the ride. Let turn off the internet ADD brain for a second. Um, so where it's going to burn. Yeah. <laughs> so where do you find a quality <laughs> VPN? Right, like that's, that's people are asking. All right. So there's two recommendations that I make rise up. Rise up provides online communication tools for people and groups working on liberatory social change. Um, they're a project to create democratic alternatives and practice self-determination by, by controlling your own secure means of communication. They provide a uh, multitude of services at zero to little cost to activists and politically active people from email to chat servers to VPN services. Um, I can recommend them for their dedication to activists at essentially no cost. But what I can't do is recommend them based on their security being tested and tested hard. Rise Up has never been properly tested, in my opinion, and they often close their signups. Oh, shit, I should have started. Why you motherfuckers didn't tell me to record any of this? Um, didn't I tell some of y'all motherfuckers to tell me to start doing this shit yesterday? Somebody's failing their crowdsourcing jobs. Um, what are you talking about? Um, I'll have to fuck it. I'll have to, you know what? I'll fucking, mm, I'm, I'm never going to fucking trim it out. I'm just going to reference people to it. Um, so that leads me to, um, rise up is free. Yes. Um, rise up free. Uh, caboose. Hey Kai, you should be recording this. Fuck you caboose. Um, yeah. Y'all motherfuckers dropping the ball. Um, Yo, Dancing Bear 007. That is a sus fucking name. Uh, so that leads me to my second recommendation. My second remedi er, recommendation is PIA. Um, Y'all have heard me shell for PIA before. I would I would take their money, but I'd do it for free. Um, 
PIA is private internet access. Um, yeah, well, I'm not recording, Marcus, so there's no point in turning them off now. Um, PIA is private internet access. Um, that's how you find them, privateinternetaccess.com. Um, and they are the only VPN provider that has been properly tested, and not once, but twice. Um, how? By the FBI hauling their asses into federal court and literally coming up empty-handed both times. That's how. Um, PIA is... Um, that's only for... That's a vast misunderstanding of... of uh, no. Yeah. No. Um, I'm not even going to address it. That's so poorly understood. Um... <clears throat> Basically, PIA is a favorite of pirates. It, the, the people sailing the high seas have been using PIA for quite some time. Um, they keep nothing. They have no associated records. They have no logs. They literally don't know what their customers are doing, and they have no way to know what their customers are doing, and that's by design. Um, the only drawback is that PIA is a commercial service. Um, but... As I stated, their billing is completely separate from the other service they provide. Um, you don't get to use choose usernames. They are assigned new, like alphanumerically. It's just a, in a, a randomized assigned username. And they can't really tell anybody other than you are a customer. And if you're feeling particularly paranoid, um, and remember, it's not paranoia if they are out to get you, I suppose, um... PIA has non-traceable methods of payment, including cryptocurrencies and up to and including sending them per, uh, purchased gift cards and prepaid cards. You can go down to CVS or Walgreens or Walmart and get a prepaid card and literally send them the number on the card and they will spin up an account based off of that. So you can use secure methods to access the website, which we will cover in a second, and anonymizing your connection, and you can send them a cash paid fucking card number for a prepaid card that you go into a store with fucking a wig and like dress up, dr dresses the opposite, you know, uh, gender or sex or however you wish to address this leftist, fucking use the language you want to use for this. Um, but you can put on a fucking wig and sunglasses, your Jackie O uh, sunglasses and a fucking uh, ball cap. And you can go into Walmart and buy a prepaid card and go completely incognito on this shit, pay cash and you can get a PIA account. Um, and you can prepay it that way. Um, so there is literally no tra uh, trail for payment. Um, so <clears throat> you've got a VPN. Now what? Well, remember before when I told you that a VPN can secure the stream of data, but it doesn't actually make you anonymous? Well, it's time to take care of that part. Next is TOR. Um, TOR is an acronym. It stands for the Onion Router or Onion Routing. It's a piece of open source uh, software. I was, to say, I was about to say, you just answered the question with another question. The fuck is an onion router? Yeah, it's an open source piece of software, free as in free beer, meaning you actually get something for nothing. All right, that's, that's, that's the open source sort of way of saying things. Like, is it free as in free beer? Yes, it's free as in free beer. You get something for nothing. Um that it, it enables un anonymous communication by directing internet traffic through a free worldwide volunteer network consisting of more than 7,000 relays in order to conceal your user location from anyone conducting uh, network surveillance or traffic analysis. Now, they have some issues. You've crossed the boomer zone. Yes, exactly. Um, there, oh, are, yeah. there are some technical things that I'm not going to get into, but what you need to know is that sort of okay so there's these how do i do it? um it basically makes it more difficult to track your internet activity um this includes like visits to websites online posts instant message and other communications forms right what it does for all intents and purposes is take your signal we'll just call it a signal for the 
for all intent uh, for for uh, Lucas. We all do. See, this is the whole point of open source software. We all contribute. It's communism. Open source software is communism. It it is. It is actually communism. Um, yeah. It is it it is the means of production owned by the public, controlled and operated by the public with no centralizing authority. It's co it's proper communism. Um, so what it does is it takes your signal and basically wraps it and then hands it off. And it's got a series of envelopes on it for all intents and purposes. And I hand it to the next person and they hand it to the second person. And the second person hands it to the third person. And the third person sends it on where it's supposed to go. Right? This is a gross oversimplification of a uh, onion routed TCP IP handshake. But for the intent, for all intents and purposes, for having a boomer level discussion, all you need to know is that it's basically a series of envelopes with addresses packaged in and you just hand it off to the next person and they, uh, they peel off a layer and that has an address for them and they hand it off to the next guy and the next guy peels off a layer and he goes, oh, okay. And he hands it off to where, uh, where it's supposed to go. He doesn't know where it actually came from. And the first person who it was handed to by you doesn't know where it's going. So there's these, this degree of anonymity that has been created using a digital set of technologies. Now, what you do with that is, it, it, what it actually is, is a highly customized version of the Firefox browser that you use to browse the web with. So when you launch Tor, you will launch a Firefox browser and there will be just a connect button on it. You click connect and that's it. That's the level of interaction that you need to have with the, with, uh, with the Tor network, right? All right, boomer moment, boomer okay. moment. Boomer. How does one obtain this? You go to torproject.org. You go to this website right here at torproject.org. In chat, there you go. And this is, you know, I mean, these are details that you, you know, blocks, trackers, what is it, tra surveillance, fingerprinting. You don't really need to know this stuff. All you need to know um, that is that there are multiple methods of tracking you and Tor does a good bit to defeat that. Let's see if we can. There it is. This is what Tor browser will look like. It looks like any other browser. Tor is absolutely free. 100% of the way through, you will never pay for any portion of it in no way, shape, or form. And if anybody tries to make you pay for something involved with Tor, then you are getting ripped off and turn around and go the other way. Um, so that is how you obtain Tor. That is how you run Tor. Um, no, it is not. It actually is. I mean, it's right in the logo there, Caboose. That is literally the Tor logo. It has an onion in it. It, it is, yeah, the onion router. Um, so, you can use Tor plus a VPN. Your ISP can see you will get again motherfucker stop putting the car to before the horse you don't even know how to browse securely so you don't know how to secure your computer session yet let me do this in an order that i know is the appropriate order um you can use tor plus a vpn now what you have to understand about all of these technologies is that they add a layer of co connections between you and your intended destination so 
DuckDuckGo.com or really heinous hentai porn.com, right? <clears throat> Every added hop that you include in that connection is going to slow down that connection and return. It is just an automatic byproduct. If my package to Scott has to go through the USPS, a third-party logistics handler, and then get rehanded off to some last-mile transit company, rather than just go to the post office, the post office via USPS the entire way, it's going to take longer. That's just added sorting, added hands, added logistics. Right? It's going to slow down that package reception. That's just how it's going to work. So you have to understand Tor is slower than your normal internet. VPNs are slower than your normal internet. Tor plus a VPN or a VPN plus Tor is doubly slow. But would you prefer a slightly slower connection that may be five, seven, 10 seconds loading the page versus potentially somebody kicking in your door? This is your choice. So I think you can choose wisely on this one. Tor, Tor can be seen coming out of your internet connection. All right. Boomer moment. Okay. What's the danger of using Tor as like your regular internet browser for the normal shit you do that you're not worried about? Like, and then like the, the link ability of you not using a VPN during normal day to day shit versus if you were doing something like, I don't know, being a pirate and then cutting your VPN before that. Honestly, like, is there an added level of risk? Honestly, like not always using the VPN? Uh, yeah, uh, no, no. Actually, the, the added level of risk is basically okay, so Tor can be seen coming out of your, uh, from your ISP. So basically, a Tor connection can be seen. It, it, it's not that like they can see what you're doing. It's just that they can see that there is a Tor connection coming out of your house, right? A mm -hmm. VPN is common. Corporations use them, right? If you connect to United Healthcare's internal network as uh, as an employee, yeah, I mean, I've, I've used them as as I've used them. I mean, every corporate job yes gives you a fucking laptop and you have to connect to the vpn before you do anything same thing when i work for the government so vpns are super common so what you can do is shield your tor connection in a vpn so you can bounce your vpn connection in town or like pia's got uh vegas destinations i can use one of the vegas sites so it doesn't go that far or you can bounce it over to fucking europe if you want um and that way, no one sees that you're using Tor. Is there a downside to switching on and off? Not really. Um, at this point in internet usage, most people have secured connections coming out of their houses to one extent or another. B be it HTTPS or VPN connections, it's a relatively common thing for encrypted tunneled communications to be coming out of somebody's house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I know a ton of people that use VPNs and they don't do anything bad on the internet. They're just trying to watch a show on Netflix and they yep. need their shit to be in London <clears throat> so that they can get the show that they want. Um, so, well, all of that, HTTPS, no script, um, all of that sort of stuff happens automatically under the Tor browser. So, like, again, this is redundant stuff for a lot of things. Um, so, if you are trying to be doubly secure you can utilize a VPN connection to tunnel into your Tor connection to Tor, and then you can use Tor to completely anonymize that route therein. You can also use Tor to access the dark web. We'll talk a little more about that in a second. So, just because you have a VPN and Tor both running doesn't mean you're not going to identify yourself. Um, you need good operational security measures in place. The first of that one is don't log in. 
at the very least, you need a burner account that was created within your VPN and Tor connection. And it is never, ever accessed, stored, saved anywhere outside of a secure realm. You do not log into your Gmail account over your VPN and Tor connection. You have just completely exposed your security measures by doing that. You've identified yourself. You logged into it with a clear net IP. They know who that is that set up that account. You logged into it with a VPN and Tor connection. They know who you are. It's that simple. You do not log in to anything. And if you do, that account better be a secured account created under VPN and Tor as well. Second, keep your fucking mouth shut. This is the, like, this is key to any operational security measures you will ever engage in. Keep your fucking mouth shut. If you're, if you're doing stuff that literally could bring the fucking, the entire French government to your doorstep as a political activist, yeah, keep that one to yourself. Right. If you're buying like I don't give a shit if you're buying a fucking cannabis cartridge on a, a dark web market, you're nobody. Don't worry. You're so, no one. So. If I already have a VPN, right. And I have forgotten before that I, my VPN was on and like logged on to YouTube, my VPN's already compromised. No, because that session cycles every time. So when okay. you disconnect, so the tour is the problem. It, it, the problem is is that you have accessed a a, a a thing that has identified with you, and everything that you do in that session then is exposed. So you can cycle okay, so, that. So session. it's fine if I'm like sit down, come home, and I have tour, and I go watch some YouTube. It's chill. But like, what do I like? How how long is this, every, like, every time like, every time you, session every time you there's literally buttons for some of the stuff like in Tor you can like burn a session, um, but basically every time you disconnect your VPN and you disconnect Tor and then you reconnect a VPN and reconnect Tor that's going through an entirely new route. Okay, so the only thing I need to do to worry about this is if I was going to do something like I don't know communicate with someone or do something sus. Just make sure you exit out of your browser, go to the little taskbar, exit it all out, reopen it all up, and you're good to go? Yes. For the purposes of this scenario, yes. Assuming I'm not, like, trying to fucking, like, do something fucking wild where the strong arm of the government is coming for me as fast as possible. Yeah. And we're, we're going we're gonna to touch on a little bit of that sort of thing in, next. Um, Crystal, let's um, be honest. I'm just a propagandist, right? Like, I don't need to worry about my shit that much. Uh, the government has my retinal scans, right? Yeah. Like, I can't be doing wild shit like other people can. Uh, Crystal, even if I was smart about this, they are running a ton of relay points because the U.S. government actually uses Tor to anonymize communications for themselves when operating overseas. It, 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 one of the byproducts of that is that they have exit nodes that they can monitor. And this is like, we're going to sort of, okay, so exit nodes are the, the thing that goes back to the internet. Remember I said, you know, I hand a package off to guy A, guy B, guy C, and then guy C fucking hands it out. Guy C is technically an exit node. He, he, they are standing between Tor and the actual interwebs, right? The government does run exit nodes because the government uses Tor to anonymize their communications for agents overseas. One of the largest users of the Tor network is the United States government. It's highly effective. Um, one of the byproducts of that is, is that they can do a certain level of man in the middle stuff um, if they are so engaged to. The difference is, is that they don't run all of the exit nodes. They don't even run the majority of the exit nodes. They just run a few exit nodes. Also, there are mitigating ways to get around that, such as using a VPN and other things we'll talk about in a second. Wither, boomer question, what if you have a Google phone? Yeah, don't try and do any of this on that phone. Um, again, Outcast, Jesus fucking Christ. Outcast, I need you to stop getting ahead of everything. Right? Like, I will get to all of that. 
Every question you've asked, I get to eventually. Trust me, I've been doing this for fucking decades now. I'll get to it. Um, <laughs> when using Tor, can you make new Twitter accounts and YouTube accounts and it be good or no? I would not do that. Twitter requires phone numbers these days, do they not? Um, there are ways around that to an extent. Um, I don't know what it takes to spin up a Twitter account these days. Um, okay. So, keep your mouth fucking shut. Don't log into anything that was created off the clear web that's already associated with you. Keep your VPN and Tor connection isolated. This will serve the majority of you well. Um, again, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. It's just, guys, your questions will be addressed. Most of the questions that you guys are coming up with, I already have plans to address. So just like sit back and go for the ride. Most of that will, that will handle most of you. But as Scott said, and as I, I said, stated earlier with the, uh, the French activists that were outed by Proton Mail, Occasionally, people get up to things. Political activists some ha sometimes have to engage in direct action. And while I neither support nor denounce these, these events, whatever they may be, um, as a technologist and as somebody who is steeped in security and in cryptography, I am an advocate for securing the right, your right to privacy. To, uh, for those communications. And knowing that, let's move into some other areas. Tails. There's, we're gonna talk about tails. There is an alternative to tails that we're not gonna address today for the purposes of brevity. Um, but tails. Tails is a project that is associated with Tor. It is a portable operating system that is designed from the ground up to secure your computer and, of, uh, and otherwise avoid surveillance. Now, there's a couple of key components that you first have to understand. When engaging in high-level encrypted communications, there are technologies that you are going to have to familiarize yourself with. PGP is one of the primary technologies. PGP is pretty good privacy. It is a public key, it is a dual key ringed public private key encryption methodology. Basically what this means is that you create two keys one of them is private. Never share this. It never gets shared. It is a secure thing. The other is a public key. You can share this to the world. I can hand it out on my website. And in fact, there is a public key accessible on my website. You can share the public key to every single person in the world. What it allows you to do, you can then on the opposite side of this, I can import your public key into my key ring and I can send you highly secured messages or files encrypted for you without ever knowing a shared password. You and I never have to establish actual secured communications to share a password. We do not need a shibboleth. You and I can exchange perfectly visible data with the entirety of the world and have secured two-way communications with each other. PGP is the can you, first- Can you explain that a little more? It has to do with some really complicated ma high-level mathematics. And it's really not worth getting into, but basically there is a way for you to encrypt things unidirectionally and have a way to decrypt it at the back end. They're, the mathematicians of the world have figured out some very clever ways to do math. And that's basically what this is. Cryptography is math. And right, but what's it? What's I'm, 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 I went more boomer than that. 
<laughs> okay, like what is the point of that? The point of it is like, what what are you actually doing like and, and how are you protecting yourself? Well, what you are actually doing is you are able to okay, so most secured communications, right? Think think spycraft. Think tradecraft, all right? You and I need to, you and I need a shared message, right? If I show up in the public square, you and I need a way to know each other exist. We need a way to know to handshake, right? Right. I'll be I'll I'll be sitting on a bench with a Rubik's cube. So, how are you going to tell me that you're going to be sitting on the bench with a Rubik's cube? Well, I need some type of secured communication, right? I need I need to be able to communicate that to you. Wouldn't it be saying. Wouldn't it be great if you could send me that message without me needing to know that message see that's the thing with a password is that you need to tell me i am going to be sitting on the bench with a rubik's cube mm -hmm. what if we could secure our communications and know each other exist and have that conversation without you telling me i'm going to be sitting on a bench with a rubik's cube that's what a public key does it's only useful in one direction. I can create an encrypted message for you without knowing how to decrypt the message. It's a unidirectional. Uh, uh, okay, so what you're saying is like if if I was to come later and try to decrypt, like if I was some third party and I wanted to decrypt the message that was sent to you, it's useless. It can't be done from from my end. It, it would have to be done from their their end. It is utterly useless. A public key cannot decrypt the message. It's impossible. Like mathematically impossible. It cannot be done. So I can secure a message for you without knowing how to decrypt that message. Whereas a password you can work backwards. I'm like I'm literally like thinking about that scene from 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 Citizen Four, <laughs> where he yep. was saying like, even if I wanted to give you the stuff, I couldn't. Correct. It is, and it, it's because he sent the stuff out, and now like he can't decrypt the things he sent out. No, it's not possible. Once I secure that communication with a public key, I can't decrypt it. That's it. It's, it's a unidirectional methodology of securing communications. And it is standard place in these ways. They are no Excel. Um, we're talking like span of the universe type unique here. No, you're not going to accidentally create a public key that would be shared with somebody else. No. Um, we're talking mathematical orders of magnitude here that are staggering. Uh, quantum mechanics already has uh, quantum encrypted uh, uh, quantum encryption. So even as quantum encryption enters the fray, some of the high level encryption methodologies, such as RSA forty ninety six, um, would come down. But it was still it's still out of the reach of like normal computing processing times. In the future, maybe some of these communications may become accessible and exposed. But for the time being, we're not too. Security experts aren't too worried about it. And as commu uh, as compu uh, quantum computing comes to enter the fray, the cryptographers are already creating quantum encryption methodologies that are even more incredibly secure to the point of if you observe the communication in transit, it alters the nature of the communication and it's using quantum, uh, quantum principles. And is um, you can tell if somebody even looked at the message. Quantum security and quantum encryption and uh, quantum communication methods, when they are fully implemented in the wild, will be incredibly secure. If the government even tries to sniff the message, you will know it. Yeah, it, it is quant quantum encryption, like quantum computing, while people are like, oh, well, it may break encryption. It will usher in a new era of security and digital privacy, the likes of which governments are terrified of. I will tell you that right now. 
Yeah, I'm, I, I went full boomer and was just like, this conversation seems unimportant, so I'm not going to It try is. It is, it is completely ancillary to all of that. PG, <laughs> PG, PGP is necessary for these high-level communications. You are going to see it utilized in dark web marketplaces. You're going to see it utilized in... But you need a device. How expensive are those devices and, and what they is do, the they, risk they of cost, purchasing those They devices? cost nothing. They are digital. Um, oh, and I just saw the infographic and thought it was a fucking physical device. No, there there are keys that you could. There are hardware versions of this sort of thing. Um, All right, but no, there. What you need is generally just um, open PGP or something of that nature. Um, there are pa PGP packages for. Windows. There are multitudes of Windows, Linux, Unix, FreeBSD, um, Mac OS, um, and even the mobile platforms. There, I'm, I'm not entirely sure there's a platform in existence that PGP hasn't been ported to. Um, it is available on the command line. It is available in GUIs. It is available, I think, even in web interfaces. Um, but it is a necessary technology to familiarize yourself with. Um, I will, most of you are probably Windows users. Um, here is here is the open PGP website. They have a software section. And they have Windows. Um, if you want, the GPG for Win would be my recommendation if that you wanted to start off as a Windows user. But they have Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, Linux, browser plugins, webmail providers with those plugins, webmail providers with in-browser cryptography. Um, this is a necessary technology. Um, <clears throat> Once you understand that, um, is there a way to shuffle your current accounts? No, no, they're permanently compromised dancing. They're permanently compromised. Um, your clear web accounts, as you spun them up and access them on the clear web are permanently compromised. Do not touch them. Um, use, use them as you continue to use them, but in, in no way, shape or form should secure communications and they ever meet. Um, so, once you understand the concept of PGP, you don't have to understand mathematically, but once you understand how, how you do it, it basically is very simple. You create a new key ring. It will ask you for a name, a, an email. You don't have to put any of that in, but you can add identifying details, like, you know, fucking burner account four is the email, but generally you do something innocuous if you are going to identify it. John M, you know, that sort of thing. Um, you create a fucking key ring and that will generate a public and a private key the private key is yours now back to tails tails is as i said a <clears throat> is a portable operating system well yeah this is what i was looking at okay i'm sorry so tails runs off of traditionally a cd dvd or usb drive the modern incarnation runs off a usb drive what you do is you t you get a um, an image etcher of some sort. You can do this from command line. You can do this from a Windows GUI. But you download an image, and you put that image onto. And when I say image, I mean disk image, not a picture. Um, you, this piece of software will burn that image, put it in a file set on your USB stick. Is that like a .iso or something? It is, or a .img. Okay. Um. It will put that file system on that USB drive and you um, you then boot your computer up to that USB drive rather than your hard drive. You can do this with a laptop if you really want to be crafty. And if you really, really, really want to be crafty, you can do it on a public facing computer somewhere that isn't associated with you whatsoever, as in another town or city in a library. You 
put that USB stick into a computer, you boot to the USB drive, and it will run Tails exclusively in the RAM. Now, what you have to understand about RAM is that when you turn that computer off, it goes bye-bye. This isn't like your hard drive. It isn't a permanent state memory. This is the function of Tails, is it runs in memory only. It is, yes, it is volatile memory. Um, generally, you don't have to change the boot sequence. You just have to press something like F12 and select the boot device um, if it doesn't already auto boot to USB. Um, it runs exclusively in the memory of the computer. Tails. Okay, so this is this Tails is likely only to work on because I know like a lot of OEMs won't allow you to go won't allow the device to um, to just like access like access a different drive right so like if you bought like let's say like I mean like like unless you like reinstalled Windows or something no right? most so most you, computers ought to, uh, will boot to a USB device. Okay. Most, um, especially modern computers, they're almost all designed to. It's because that's it, kind of what I was getting at. If the, if the BIOS isn't locked, right? Like, because that's what I was getting at. Is most, like a lot of OEMs won't let you access. Oh the no, BIOS. most uh, no, most OEMs do. Like, what they do is they do, um, uh, they do a a, a fucking uh, oh God. Uh, what's somebody help me out here? What's the, uh, a UEFI uh, versus um, what's the other one I'm looking for? Um, but either way, it's an installation type. It's not an actual lock on the, uh, the BIOS itself. It's the type of installation that they usually utilize. Um, no, it's not right. I'm looking for, um, give me one sec. Um, oh yeah. Okay. This is straight up BIOS. It's you, uh, it's legacy BIOS. That's what I was looking for. Um, it's UF, UEFI versus legacy BIOS. Um, and so basically a uh, legacy BIOS are easier to use um, than UEFI. Um, but for all intents and purposes, that, do, that will not interfere or get in your way of this process. Most modern computers are set up to be able to boot to a USB device because that's how most technicians actually install an operating system these days. So what would be, if you wanted to be super secure, how what would what would you consider to be your level of protection if you just went to like a local tech shop that sells used bullshit got an old cheap laptop and only use this laptop for these things got a tails device set it up that way like i mean and then whenever you connected to the internet you always use tor and a vpn yes is that pretty much the way to do it, or would you still suggest if you were doing some wild shit to go if to you like were, a fucking library? If or some you were shit? doing okay, so you want to do if you want you want wild shit, like truly wild. I mean, I'm not gonna be doing wild. I, I, shit, I, I know. I'm just asking. But, okay, so like truly wild shit. Um, if it, it, it depends, do you have to do it regularly, or do you have to do it as a one-off? Because if you have mm. if you have to do it as a one-off there are some truly wild security measures that people have taken over the years. Um, okay. You would not want to purchase the equipment. You would want to social engineer your way into use of a computer in a township or city that you are not inherently from. You will have wanted to secure and cover your tracks for transit to there, potentially using a bus ticket that is purchased in a, um, a black market purchased um, identification that is forged. And once there, you social engineer your way into something, say, as a library situation. You boot to these secure drives. You use a uh, PGP encrypted communication system to transit a message over a, um, a, a Tor connection to some sort of um, darknet location um, that has already been pre-established. This is, this is like high-level tradecraft territory. Um, this is holy shit. The Iranian Iranian government may fucking track me down territory. Um, yeah, this is torture is potentially in my future 
if I get caught territory. Um, okay. There are there are sincerely secure methods. Um, if you are just engaging in your your base level direct action activism um, territory, then what you want to do is you ideally want a laptop that is purchased cash um, from some sort of shop locally. You want to pull the hard drive entirely. You don't want it to have any permanent storage in it whatsoever. You boot to a USB drive with Tails or Honix um, on it. Um, and uh, we're just going to stick to Tails because the other one's is fucking, it's a whole other thing. Um, you, you stick to Tails exclusively. Tails has a permanent section that you can store stuff to the USB that can be set up. So you can install a, uh, a, a, a subsequent piece of technology on it. Um, you can have your key ring on it. It's got PGP already installed on it. Um, so you, you create your key ring, you exchange your public keys with whoever you're going to be interacting with, and then you don't even need to use a darknet solution in that regard. What you do then is utilizing a public space of some sort, um, be it Starbucks, be it a library, whatever Wi-Fi, you, your neighbors, like, I mean, I wouldn't do next, next door neighbors, but fuck, you know, like at this level, you can access, like, I can, I can break into your Wi-Fi. It's not that difficult, right? Like, um, you gain access to somebody's Wi-Fi network in some regard, and you use a VPN tunnel to connect to the Tor network, and you create an email account that is shared amongst yourselves in some way, shape, or form, or individual accounts, as long as you have the addresses ahead of time. And you encrypt your, but shared accounts, here's, here's the fucking goofy thing. Shared accounts, sending an email, even between, even in the same email system is less secure than just creating drafts for your own email account. So, because yeah, that's what, that's what me and my stream partner do. We were using proton mail. We might need to talk about something else, but we were, we were communicating with each other via drafts and then just not actually sending the email. Yes. So you create those secure connections, you you have the account, and you what you do is in your PGP... Yeah, I've done about 10% of the smart things. There you go. <laughs> uh, in, your P, in your PGP, in, in, in PGP, in Tails, there's literally an item, there's a clipboard in the top menu. You click it, and you can encrypt whatever's in the, um, in the clipboard or in a notepad. So you can use your partner's P, a public key and encrypt the message, and you just put that into the draft, and you save the draft. And then your partner pulls the fucking, does the exact same thing on the opposite side of the world or whatever. And you copy out the encrypted message and they decrypt it. And it's displayed in the RAM only version of Tails. And so they can then read said message. Now, there are a few things that were asked uh, along the way. Do, am I familiar with I2P? I2P is my preferred technology. Um, I believe this was Outcast that asked this a while back. I2P is my preferred technology, but the barrier to entry for usage of I2P for most people is un it's untenable. I2P is my ideal internet solution though. Whereas Tor is, it has exit nodes and has externalities to it that create uh, potential security flaws. I2P is a contained network. It's not designed to ever exit. Once you're in the I2P, you're in essentially what, what could be refer, referred to as an intranet, right? It's not designed to go outside of it. I2P has messaging, it has email, it has all sorts of things, right? Um, it is my preferred solution for a truly um, distributed internet technology for like next generation stuff. I, I would much prefer us to head down an I2P path, um, but most people aren't ready for that. Tor also has, yes, Tor has the dot onion addresses. Tor is, that is part of the, what is called the dark web. I2P is inherently the dark web. I, uh, Tor dot onion addresses are dark web as well. Um, basically they are websites that exist only in the Tor network. They aren't on the clear web. 
they they are solely run within the tor network um that is where you find your shady ass shit that's where you find your counterfeit fucking goods your ids your drugs your fucking whatever um i can tell you firsthand um the cost for right now going cost so i looked um the going cost for a full checked U.S. ID, driver's license number, secure uh, social security number, credit checked identification, all associated address, and a credit card goes for thirty five dollars. I can buy them by the batches of twenty five thousand if I wanted. Yeah. Your ID, your your identity is worth $35. That's what it's worth. So that's the sort of place that that's that's what happens in, in around the dot onion territory. Um, is your dark web markets. You're telling me it only costs thirty five dollars to get some of these undocumented immigrants to start paying taxes? Basically. <laughs> Um, yeah, I can get you, I can use social security card for fucking basically nothing. I think they're like two, three dollars. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely nothing. Republicans, let's gather around. <laughs> yes, monster. That is somebody else's. Let's stop trying to change laws and let's start getting these people some fucking social security numbers. Um, get them real jobs. <laughs> Exol? No. No, I'm kidding. By the way, it, um, yeah, Axel, um, aren't a lot of those bogus though? No, um, I gotta tell you, the this is this is gonna this is gonna make fucking Scott's heart heart fucking like grow three sizes basically. Um, the principles by which dark web markets operate could easily be described along lines of say libertarian capitalism. They are reputation-driven, contract-driven exchanges, and it works. If you're selling bunk IDs, you're not going to be around for long. It's the truth. Um, I'm going to need a couple minutes. i got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> it, <laughs> it works. It, it, it works. In that microcosm, it works. With her, not at all. That's why it was a joke. Um, it, you can get all sorts of things. Um, it is a space in which legality doesn't really factor in. Um, it is solely determined by the ethical framework of those that participate. Um, no, not around for long. Like their reputations will be ruined. Um, they won't. Nobody will buy from them. Um, I, I, you know, most, most of those systems run reputation systems, um, and they have dispute methodologies and they track how many disputes there have been with your account, how many you have won, how many you have lost. Um, yeah, they're, they're, it works. It works. When 7,300 people all give somebody five star fucking ratings and every single one of those is confirmed cryptographically like you can't you can't fake that you have to have purchased from these people you have to have gone through this process because of the mathematic cryptographic process that's tied into it most of these places run pgp uh, dual pgp encryption systems um if you want to know um yeah the silk road guide was a fucking idiot um, if you want to know how these systems work, basically you connect via Tor, you, um, have to one, know the correct address. The addresses are insane. The addresses are, this is not fucking google.com. The addresses, I'm not kidding you, are this long. They're, they're absurd address schemes. You have to know the correct address. Once you get there then you are free to create an account. You create the account and you, you upload a PGP public key. 
this this key then allows for secure communications between the system vendors and yourself because they can now securely communicate with you all vendors and admin staff have their own public keys so you can communicate with them when you connect when you find an item that you're wanting to purchase which by the way there's actually innocuous goods like non-illegal stuff sold in these spaces as well a lot of these fuckers just ethically don't agree with the tax system and they're looking for means to subvert it i'm not kidding you a lot of the stuff that actually happens on those marketplaces is not necessarily like in, illegal in the way that you'd think it would be illegal damn it i gotta go to the bathroom again yeah they're, they're literally just looking to <laughs> bypass the tech system. Um, porn accounts. You can buy porn accounts on there. It, it's, it's, it's insane. <clears throat> um, so you create an account. You give it your, your public PGP key. And you find an item that you're looking to purchase. Most of these systems use Monero these days. Um... Most of them use, it's a, it's a crypto coin uh, that is more secure and obfuscated for uh, transmission um, than standard Bitcoin is. You purchase the item, you get assigned a randomly created Monero wallet by the system. It spins up a brand new address for you, a new wallet every time. You transmit your secured coins over to that address. The system recognizes that the that payment had been received by transaction notices on the network. It marks it as paid. It waits for the seller to accept your pay, uh, accept your order. They mark it as uh, they mark it as accepted, and then the money is held in escrow until goods are marked as received on your side. And if they're mark, if they're not received, if you mark it as not received, you can dispute the transaction and receive your money back. And once you mark it as received, you're free to leave your reviews for the seller, and the, re the seller is free to review uh, leave reviews for you. This is how, how do you protect the exchange of money, though? It's that's I understand the the I understand like the PGP is like not back traceable that's but is that's the, handled I mean, by monero wallets are that's that's handled by the monero system monero is okay. uh is an obfuscated coin um so rather than the public transaction record that is bitcoin monero has an obfuscated transaction record um gnome in fact yes there are stuff yeah, there are there are viable uses such as that, um, cheaper insulin and those sorts of things. Yes, um, it is. There, so now you don't actually have to drive across the Canadian border to get your to get your two thousand your two thousand uh, dollar EpiPen for three hundred dollars. Uh, correct, uh, Katie Cat. Just pay someone four hundred. <laughs> H HRT is a segment that is exchanged. Yeah. They're, they're a good portion of the trans community does get their um, goods that way. From what I can tell, from my observations at a distance, yeah, it seems to be that there's at least a segment of the global trans community who does not have ready access to HRT um, that is operating in this modality. Yeah. Um. So... Tails, plus understanding how PGP works, plus having a viable VPN solution such as v, uh, as um, PIA paid via cash card, and understanding how to use the Tor network while also keeping your head down, not logging into various things that are already associated with your identity, and knowing how to shut up about your actions on that network while you're doing it. You're nigh untraceable. You're nigh untraceable at that point. Mitre, what's up, man? So that that basically concludes operational security for the activist. I, with that, you can keep your head down. 
what you do with that information, that's up to you. I, I don't openly condone any illegal activities, but I do believe firmly in the open sharing of education and information. And I do believe data privacy to be a right. So, yeah, I think it's important that we share these sorts of things. And to be perfectly honest, the barrier to entry has come down a long ways. In the last 10 years, it's it's a lot easier. It's a lot easier. Like, it's it's. I'm confident I could walk the most boomer fucker through it at this point. It, yeah, it doesn't seem that hard from what you described. No, it isn't. Once upon a time, there was all sorts of configurations and files and, you know, you had to understand parameters and things that were set. Now, download it and run it. Yeah. Do you have a Do you have a link to the uh, to the in text tutorial? Yeah, it's uh, cs.kaisthings.com. Um, I don't have any of like the the tails sort of stuff. Um, like the the sort of like secured operating system sort of stuff isn't in there, but it's in chat. Uh, cs.kaisthings.com. That'll get you the sort of what is a VPN? Where do I find a quality VPN? So I've got a VPN. Now what? What is Tor? How to use Tor plus a VPN? And then how not to identify yourself. That's all in that portion of it. Um, Katie Cat, yes. Um, see, uh, see the open PGP website. Um, for examples of that, if you go to the software section on the openpgp.org that I posted here, I'll save it for you a lot easier. Uh, I'll put it in chat for you. Um, there will be a section for webmail provider with browser plugins and you will see, uh, you will see the Gmail one there. Um, so you can use Mailvelope, um, which will have a link there as well. Um, you can use uh, Mailvelope, which is a browser extension for Google Chrome and Firefox that integrates into something like Gmail. Um, that will allow you to use PGP uh, in your Gmail account. <clears throat> that will allow for secure communication, but not uh, anonymity. I'm not gonna lie, your website looks gross. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> this shit looks like something from the 90s. Are you on a web, uh, on a web page? Uh, are you on a cell phone or a browser? A browser. Oh, well, that should not, I mean, there's fucking even, I'd love to see a screenshot of you. Hold on, let me just share screen with you. Real oh, quick. you're on uh, you're on the cheat sheet, right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Go to the, that's that's literally the cheat sheet. It's literally designed to be viewed on like a cell phone on the fly. Um, go to the go to the actual website. Oh okay, I just went and looked at. I just like clicked. The, oh okay, all right, there you go. Yeah, all right. Like the cheat sheet is literally designed to be. It is a self-contained HTML file with all images. Jesus Christ! Embedded you need a into new it. photo. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know it's on the to do. Um, but yeah, the um, yeah the 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 you can literally download the cheat sheet as a singular HTML file. All images will be embedded. Everything will automatically be there. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah that that is specifically designed to be that way. Um, uh, what about actual email? What are some more secure versions if VPN Tor aren't readily an option? Uh, Hushmail, H-U-S-H-M-A-I-L.com, Hushmail. They're hosted out of Canada, so they're subject to a lot of the same fucking bullshit, but they do have inbuilt encryption in between Hushmail accounts, and you can also automatically encrypt for an external view um, so I can send you an email and if we've exchanged a password in advance, you can click the link and input the password and decrypt it. Um, so hush mail. Yeah, would be my recommendation there. 
um, Wither. And I think they still do free accounts. Let me check. Maybe? I don't know. I've been with them for ages. It looks like maybe they aren't free anymore. For many, many, many years, they were free outright. Um, but yeah, um, the Hushmail will allow you encrypted forms, shit like that. So people can like send you, like you can literally build a, a form so people can send you encrypted messages um, without even having to email you. Oh. Um, Eli, the computer guy said, there's no way to ensure privacy on the internet. Is that true? Eli, the computer guy is wrong. Um, it, it, there is, there is a way, there are ways to ensure privacy on the internet. It just, there's a techno, a technological barrier to entry. There's, there's a knowledge gap. Um, there's ways to do it though. Yeah, for sure. Um, but your average person is not going to be educated enough, uh, and prepared enough to do it. So as the internet stands, it needs modified. Like you said, like to, to, sec to securely communicate on the internet, you need a whole host of other technologies that you need to layer on. The internet in its standard clear net state with TCP IP, um, uh, you know, as the basis for it is no, it's not secured. It's not designed to be secured. We, we literally have to put layered technologies on it to secure it. Um, we, it needs a fundamental ground up redesign straight up. That's, that's what it requires. Um, I, whether it'll happen or not, we'll see. Um, All right. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> Katie, if you're using Wi-Fi, you're not secured. It's that simple. Um, Yeah. I can I can kick you off the internet um, by using your signal. Your 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 connection to your Wi-Fi router can give me enough information to cause a uh, to send a reset packet to your uh, t uh, and kick you off the uh, kick you off your router, giving me the opportunity to do a man in the middle and figure out your um, your key for your uh, for your Wi-Fi. Yeah, if you're using Wi-Fi, you're not secured. Um, and you're quite welcome, Scott. Um, yeah, like that's, that, that's, that's operational security for the activists. Like that's, if you're gonna, if you're gonna get your hands dirty kids, you need to have, know how to keep them clean. You should put them that way, put it that way. Um, wired, wired is always better than Wi-Fi. Ethernet cable, Ethernet cable. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it. Um, and thank you for serving as my boomer. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. Are there are there any leftover boomer questions in your brain? I was trying to think about it. I mean, I took notes, to be honest with you. So I feel like I got it all. Um, I guess the only thing that I would ask is, like, is there a good place in terms of a tutorial in terms of, like, setting up tails when you purchase one? Right, because like not, you're just kind of like do not purchase, over, like never putting purchase. an image on it. You know what I mean? Like, is there a good like? Is this just a thing you could easily YouTube and they'll walk you through it? Yeah, um, the Tails website itself will walk you through it. Okay. All, because everything else seemed like I could kind of probably every, figure it out on my own. Everything order. outside of the VPN that I discussed today should never cost you a dime. The USB drive that that'll cost you money but most people right. have one of those laying around every single thing we discussed outside of vpn service is free never pay anything if somebody mentions money you're fucking getting scammed well except for maybe the even the vpn you said you could use like what was it raise or something rise up um, but they rise up does close they 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 open acceptance for new accounts and they close acceptance for new accounts so right. sometimes rise up isn't going to be available. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm good on that. 
If you want to, if you want me to hop out, I will. Um. Yeah. Sure. Why not? I'll I'll fucking solo at it for a while since I'm I don't. I mean, I'm I'm fine either way. Um. I'm just chilling. Let's see. Does it matter where you get your tales from? Like, if you download it on your home computer and then use it on an anonymous device? Uh, no, you're fine. You're fine in that regard. Uh, no, if you download tales to like your home computer and you burn it from your home computer and then you use tales on some sort of anonymized device, you're fine. Yeah, that doesn't matter. Uh, does ketchup belong on hot dogs? You do you, boo. You shouldn't. You shouldn't be eating the sugar and ketchup. Um, if I use my credit card to buy PIA, how compromised am I? Not at all. Dancing. They have. They do not associate payment systems with account systems. Um, so the, the your data trail on PIA doesn't exist. They have no means to associate. They, they can. They can tell the FBI you have an account with us. They're like this credit card has an account with us. Well, what has that credit card been doing? I don't know. Like, well, what has that account been doing? We don't know. Well, how many times have they accessed the service? We don't know. When did they access the service? We don't know. PIA has- I'm, just trying to, I'm, I'm thinking right now of like an absurdly swollen, large bodybuilder, like over top of a tiny little laptop with like glasses um, on, like setting this all up so that he can get his steroids. Security for the activists, like. Yeah, it, it's- <laughs> Um, I don't know if ultra surf is any good. Um, I would say it isn't, um, Rev. I, the only reason I recommend PIA is because PIA is the only single VPN that has been tested not once, but twice in federal court. The FBI has taken PIA to court and this is documented and they come up lacking both times. There's nothing to subpoena. They don't have anything. Like, you can subpoena the shit out of PIA. They don't have the logs. Their system is built in a way that they do not have access to any of that because it doesn't exist. So there's nothing for them to turn over for state's evidence. And unlike Switzerland, in the instance of Proton Mail, they're not required to. This nation, like I know, most most people are like, oh, you need a, you know, you need a VPN in Switzerland. No, Switzerland has d logs on the, they have laws on the books that require their technology companies to uh, cooperate with the federal government in those ways. The U.S. doesn't. They can't be compelled at this time is our in our current legal status to log what their users are doing. It's up to them to turn over any logs if they have them. But logging itself is not mandated. They don't have to. And if they don't have that data, then they have nothing to turn over when the subpoena comes. VPNs don't need to log IP by Swiss laws. Email does for six months. Oh, there you go. Um, I know that a lot of like video game companies that do private servers, which is against like, you know, IP laws tend to do their stuff in the Ukraine. What, what do you, I mean, are there companies and stuff based in the Ukraine because of those laws? Like, I'm just curious. I don't know, but there may be, um, uh, I was just curious. Cause I, I know that like, like, like when before like vanilla world of Warcraft came out, right. Um, on, um, by blizzard, like a lot of people would play on private servers and you couldn't set those up in the U S because even though they didn't have to like track stuff, they, you know, they had IP laws, but from what I understand, the Ukraine has like, like you, it's a, it's the wild west for the internet there as well. I don't see anybody who's based in the Ukraine, but everybody has servers in the Ukraine, in Ukraine. Yeah. Um, everybody has servers there. But nobody seems to be based there because that's that's yeah the like everyone would have their serp their their private server is almost always in the Ukraine. It was a pain in the ass because you know if you were an American, you had some serious lag. <laughs> yeah, like everybody seems to have some route out in in Ukraine, um, but I don't. You'd have to base your company there to get around the that that sort of stuff. Okay, I'm just curious. Yeah, and that that would be the difference. Um, I think I recently found, well, I mean, if you, 
if you found them, send them to me because I need that sort of stuff, Outcast. I will gladly take that off your hands. Um, yeah. Uh, Astral. Uh, could be an ISP in Poland. Is in connected to the internet exchange with an ASN assigned? Um, yeah. Also, by Swiss laws, they can send a request by the Federal Intelligence Service and log anything if mandated by a judge. Jesus Christ. Yeah, um, here's the thing, kids. Don't, um, um, don't, don't, don't think the Swiss are on your side. <laughs> um, they, they haven't been privacy centric since their banking laws got like overhauled in what, the late nineties? Like, yeah, that Switzerland is not a safe haven anymore. Once upon a time they were, but not anymore. Um, so yeah, that was Jesus Christ. I've been meaning to do that for a while. I'm gonna have to, Jesus Christ, I'm gonna have to go in and trim that out. I'm gonna have to go in and trim that out. I've been meaning to do that for a long time. And God, I wish I had recorded it. <clears throat> it's not that bad to trim it. I hate doing that shit though. Uh, I mean, I have a system for that. Make echoes, I just push a fucking button and fucking I can just, you know, and it auto uploads. Oh, well, fair enough. I mean, I usually just throw stuff into uh, Lightworks Studios and then just find the beginning, find the end, cut the rest out, move to the left and export, and it's done. Uh, IP Vanish runs out of the British Virgin Islands, giving them a slight edge over PIA, which runs out of the U.S. We can still subpoena in the British Virgin Islands. There's no, there's no edge there. Um, I would, I, my question is, has IP Vanish ever been subpoenaed by the U S federal government and have they been tested in federal court? That is my question. Um, because the British Virgin Islands has extradition and data security agreements. They, we've got treaties with the British government, right? That it, 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 it literally makes no difference. Um, GCHQ has complete fucking, uh, 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 purview over that portion of the world which is just another member of the five eyes so it's essentially one in the same as the u.s digitally as far as digital security goes 